Hello, my name is Aaron Snow, and I'd like to talk about techniques in creating chatbots. Now, there are so many different types, but you know, there's sort of of a progression that I went along with. You know, when I'm working on this stuff, um, I've been working on a on a chatbot since like 2009, I think. And uh, I believe it's 2009 when I started, and it's right now it's 2015. So I'd say a few years <laughs> I've been doing this, and I enjoy it. And I've learned that there was a progression as I was learning. There was a progression in my techniques, you know, and, and things that I noticed. What could I do to improve this AI to make it more human-like? To make it more like, you know, it's like, this is a cool chatbot. You know, pass a Turing's test or something like that, where it's like you actually think you're talking to a person or similar or some sort of intelligent life form. Um, that's where I'd like to get it to, where it's like very good at, at uh, communication. And so I've actually learned a thing or two as I went along, and there's more to it than I, even I know because some people have areas of um, areas of expertise when they started out in this way. They uh, some people, you know, come of come from a very mathematical background. Some people think about things as an equation, and so they when they go to write a chatbot, they think they think about the numbers. They think about certain types of statistics. Um, there are types of people, you know, again, there are types of people who uh, come from it, you know, just a variety of different angles. Well, the angle that I come from, it's just, I would think um, a normal person would come from, <laughs> you know, it's like, what can I do to get started? Well, the first thing you do, as most normal people do, they start off with hard-coded information. And a hard-coded information is... Um, is information that you like directly right into the right into the program straight up like no if ands or buts and there's really no learning involved at least the AI doesn't really learn because you just hard coded you're scripting uh, a play you're writing a book in a program you know so you say hello and the AI responds with hi okay that's hard coded. You say hello, AI says hi. And then you get to thinking, well, if I write down every conceivable combination, then I can make a pretty elaborate AI. Well, well, you can make an interesting AI. I mean, a lot of games are hard coded this way. You follow a certain script, you follow a certain direction, and it leads you to certain uh, consequences. You know, it's like a game. You you enter a room, you get shot, <laughs> or you know, it's a series of events that's pre-scripted, and that's what this is about. It's hard coded into the uh, program itself, but that's not really too fun because it's once you know the direction it goes, you know, um, there's no more progression because it didn't learn anything, and if anything, it didn't create anything. You know, this conversation is going nowhere. I know exactly what you're going to say next type of a situation. So, you know, we, we, uh, we learned that, though, as the basics, the, the number one. And, and it can be used throughout your chatbot for various reasons. Uh, I think about human responses sometimes, you know, when I consider an AI response. And the closest thing I can think of is uh, what we call generic responses. Somebody says, you know, how are you today? And you respond with, I'm fine. And you don't even think about it. You just say, I'm fine. And we have a lot uh, of generic responses. Usually it's something that you say so often that it really loses its meaning, you know. So um, that's what that is. So, so uh, we have this hard-coded thing. But the next stage up is, is when you uh, use perhaps other people's examples or perhaps you sort of randomly build a field like with a game some games are like that like with Minecraft 
it actually randomly generates its world. And you have to have, of course, with Minecraft, there is a certain amount of guidance, and it's no difference with a, with a chat bot. You can take other people's conversations and teach it to your chat bot, and uh, based upon their conversations, you can create responses accordingly. Like uh, if Bill from Nantucket or whatever, he's over there having a conversation with somebody else on the Internet, and we have this conversation, and uh, so Bill says, you know, I like peanuts. Somebody else says, oh, I hate peanuts. And, and Bill says, well, that's not good. And then the other person says, well, I'm allergic to peanuts. You know, this conversation goes on, and we can use that as an example and inside our com I, uh, in, inside our chat bot, and so next time we talk about peanuts, instead of following something I hard coded into the computer, well, we can actually use other people's conversations as an example. So I said, you know, I said hello, and it goes instead of looking for my response, what I or what I recoded already coded into the computer, it instead looks at Joe's conversation who lives somewhere else you know it's for instance if we downloaded like 10 zillion conversations from internet providers or say Twitter and Facebook and all that stuff and it's like two people are talking to each other we can use those as examples to feed into our chatbot um, th this type of learning um, oh uh, it's where a Markov chain can really shine um, in this circumstance. And a Markov chain, uh, I like Markov chains. You can use Markov chains for a lot of reasons, but a Markov chain is a predictor based upon past experiences, at least what I know of it. I'm sure there might be some long, elaborate... Uh, explanation by some genius out there but I think of it like um, you know it, it's like you go to work and say say you leave the house and you're going to work and every day you pass a dog and then a little bit a mile or two later you pass a cow a mile or two later you pass uh, another dog and see this happens every morning okay now you can, because it's happened every morning, you have this past history, and now you can begin to guess that you're probably going to see the same dog, cow, and dog on your journey to work. And this, this is a way of predicting based upon past experiences. You don't really know if they're going to be there, but you can guess that they're going to be there. And that's what a Markov chain does. It guesses based upon statistics. Statistically, the cow... The dog, the cow, and the other dog have always been there because it's, and say one day the cow wasn't there and it was a, a surprise, but based upon statistics, the next day you would think, well, the cow will probably come back. And we are statistic driven as a people. So a Markov chain can really do a lot in predicting you know, in, in a conversation. Uh, we can get in conversations where it can be like that, where you're, it's like, well, we had this conversation five times before, and I know what you're going to say next. <laughs> because, um, you know, you have very few uh, variants. You know, mm -hmm. you usually say the same thing. Sometimes you say a little different, but most of the time you say this one thing, and I, I'm guessing you're going to say that again. But they not, may not be true, but, you know, statistically, this is your next, your next sentence. And that's what a chatbot can do. It can actually use a Markov chain to predict what's going to take place based upon statistical responses that it has learned from vast quantities of other conversations. Okay. Now, a Markov chain can be used in a lot of different ways as, besides that predicting of conversations. 
uh, it can be used to predict, um, like in, in an NLP, you know, a natural language processing, and in, in which you're trying to find the noun, verb, and, and adverb, and stuff like that. It can actually help predict um, what should follow a noun because it's like, for instance, every time you say a sentence, your your noun is always followed by an article, you know, an article like A or the. And so it can predict based upon past experiences that most likely when you say a noun then or a thing or something like that, you're going to have an article behind it and it helps predict, you know, for various reasons. A Markov chain can be used a lot of ways. It can be used to help predict stock markets. You know, it, it's, a, it's a very common tool, especially in, in uh, chat bots. Well, it should be. I don't know how often it's used, but I think it's pretty cool. Um, I just got through erasing the NLP business. Anyway, and NLP is another tool of the trade when it comes to um, Markovs or when it comes to chatbots. Of course, uh, an NLP breaks the sentence down and, and tries to get information out of sentences specifically. So it's actually trying to uh, tag sentences to so they'll... Uh, you can get more pertinent information out of of them. You can use an NLP, for instance, in a Markov chain. Instead of searching for a specific sentence, you can actually search for a subject. Or you can like a, ch you have a, let's pretend that we have, you know, um, Bill and Bob had a conversation, you know, every week, uh, three times a week. And every week, the first conversation has always been about peanuts. The second conversation has been about dogs. And the third conversation has been about the rain. And this has happened for weeks and weeks and weeks. Every week, you know, three times a week, they have the same conversation. And it's like the whole subject of the conversation is either about, pe either about peanuts, dogs, or rain. Now, the conversation itself may not be be perfectly equal, you know, but the subject is. And an NLP can can identify the subject of those conversations or identify the subjects of sentences or identify, you know, how a sentence, how a conversation is flowing. And so a Markov, Markov chain predicts what's up ahead based on more past experiences. So you could say, well, since we talked about, for the last several weeks, we talked about peanuts, we talked about dogs, and we talked about the rain. Well, I'm going to guess that tomorrow, since it's the third time of the week, we're going to talk about rain. Because by past experiences, we used to mark, we used a, an NLP to help predict um, or to help identify the trend. And uh, so that's what that's about. Uh, again, uh, they're, they're two different things, but they work together. The, the other one that is uh, a buzzword, I suppose, in any type of artificial intelligence word, world, including, uh, I guess, chatbots, is, is a term called uh, neural networks, you know, NN or uh, ANN or, you know, Basically, it's a neural. I don't know if I spelt that right. Anyway, let's scribble neural network. And neural networks are more than just Markov chains. Markov chains predicts things based upon the past. A neural network, as it learns, it's rewriting itself. And so if you get information it's never seen before, it will make a wild guess, whereas a Markov chain doesn't make a guess. It only, it only is based upon past experiences. Neural networks are based upon past experiences, 
and will still make a guess because it's, it actually changes its structure. It's like your brain. Well, it's exactly like your brain. Your brain learns things, um, learns bits of information, but as it, as you get older or as you learn skills, your brain actually, actually changes its structure. And so it processes information differently as time goes by. And so, um, information actually, if you get new information, you still will have a result in a neural network. Whereas a Markov chain would never have, would say, Oh, I don't know that. You know, I've never seen this before. And a neural network can actually predict something that, you know, it's just randomly predict something now really stock market stock markets use neural networks more than anything else or they combine themselves with a markov chain type of thing to predict wild events or to predict not only based upon time but or based upon past events but actually you know guarantee a result of some kind even if it's you know, it most likely true, but it may not be true. But anyway, it's used in stock markets all the time, predicting markets and stuff. But it's used in your brain as well. <laughs> it's it's kind of like a, when you think you see a face out in the woods or a face in the dark, and really there's no face there, but your mind is trying to make sense of the things that you see. That's a good example of your brain or the neural network in your mind, uh, your uh, optical uh, recognition where it sees, you know, even computer programs do that. We have a, an optical uh, face finder where it tries to find faces, you know. Some, uh, well, they use neural networks to do that or neural network type systems where it's like it was shown 10,000 faces and now it restructured its own network and now it kind of kind of has a vague idea of what a face should look like and so it starts spotting faces sometimes that aren't really there but when you look at it you can see why it chose that because you can see the eyes you can see the mouth like some <laughs> some programs will find faces in wood some of them find faces in the dark when there is no face but uh, that's just the way neural networks work. Um, I guess you could use it in the same context as a Markov chain, predicting conversations, but maybe even more precise, predicting the style of sentence uh, or answering with a sentence. Even, even whether you don't have an appropriate input, it will still bring an output or a new input that it's never heard before. Well, this is my rambling on about this stuff. But, you know, you have you have these systems. You have the hard-coded. You have Markov chains. You have NLP. You have neural networks. You have all these different, different stuff. And together, over time, you should be able to build a chatbot. Now, I've also combined scripting and game, game style formatting. I really don't know what it's called. I talked about it in a previous video, one of the first couple of videos that that I added to this channel. This is my genius channel. That's why I call it the Village Idiot. <laughs> but that's what this channel is about. It's just random thoughts about artificial intelligence and such, things like that. Now, um, I think that pretty well covers a lot of stuff right there. But uh, I hope this means something to somebody uh if not then that's fine uh, i know i'm not really being too specific i probably at some point i will try to get specific try maybe try to actually code uh, a markov chain or something like that but i don't know uh anyway um i appreciate you guys for listening and i hope this made sense and my rambling doesn't sound too too terrible. Anyway, thank you guys for listening, and see you later. Bye.